Hi there. Oh my goodness. Oh, right. New roots are growing on my little Cernua, Sophronites Cattleya Cernua. Thank you for joining me. This is something that I'm very nervous about now. I'm always so confident when it comes to new roots growing, when it is time to readjust or resituate, even change the setup. I will show you after I've transferred this one into a pot why I'm scared and I'm hoping that you will keep your fingers crossed for the two of us. New roots, I don't want to be doing any more of this remossing. Now would be the time to do that with new roots growing. I'm tired of it. The orchid is also getting bigger. That means the needs and the care requirements will change and it's going to become more demanding. All the good things that we want to see in a collection. I have such a dry climate over the summer that I am so concerned for the longevity and welfare of this orchid. And this constant remossing and disturbing the orchid is also something I want to avoid in the future. That is why I started with these inorganic mounts so that I would not have a problem having to keep ripping orchids off a mount. You can see it comes off quite easily despite the fact that there's a good root system in the base there. Let me get the tag off before I get ahead of myself. However, I am nervous because it didn't work so well for my coccinia. I'll show that to you when I'm done here, just briefly at the end to, tell, to show you why I'm scared. These guys, they obviously like to be mounted Clearly it has done very, very well. It is me not wanting to do any more of this mossing nonsense. What I plan to do with this orchid is put it into the setup the same as my Rapiculus Lelias. And I just realized I might be blocking with my other hand what I'm doing here. So I'm just peeling off all the old moss. The top looks covered in algae. The bottom is not so bad. But in the past, I used to remoss two times a year. Every time I would see new roots growing, I would take off the old moss and refresh. And within about four to six weeks, the moss would be green again, looking unsightly. And yes, it's just a visual aspect, but it bothers me to no end. So if that was bothering me so much, I decided that this year I'm going to change the setup. I'm giving it the same setup as my Rapiculus Lelias. I find they have a very similar growth habit and I don't have to worry so much anymore. A, disturbing it two times a year and B, I can be more aggressive with the water and less aggressive in the winter the watering in the summer being the more aggressive part. Sorry, I didn't finish that thought properly. I'm just going to clean her up carefully. See if I don't destroy any new roots that could be possibly already in the moss. New root tips are growing. Ooh, I'm so glad to be done with this. And I'm also quite scared, to be honest with you. I'm just going to bank on the fact that I've got new roots growing and hope for the best because she has done so well in the past. Also time to be trimming off some old roots. It's a beautiful sunny day, so that's why I don't even have my stainless steel canister because the reflection, wow, it's bright. <laughs> no need to be staring into that without sunglasses on. If I put sunglasses on now, I won't see what I'm doing. But I'm going to be cleaning her up and hopefully not lose her. It 
It is normal for these roots to be failing every once in a while. It is a cattleya after all. These are very old roots from days gone by. So I'm not worried about that at all. I am worried about the health of the future roots in the new setup. hours later it was a bit of a fiddle <laughs> yeah very very careful anyway I do believe that I got her as cleaned up as possible for her next stint in the inorganic setup semi-hydro I have crocked the pot with large lava rock just to save on some space got my holes in there I make my holes always the back of the pot and then just make sure that the holes can't be covered or smothered or blocked in any way for the future. Just make sure that there's some lava rock in there to protect those holes long-term. Sometimes I've had holes get clogged up because of algae. That can happen, but it shouldn't be because of debris. Look at all those beautiful roots coming there. Oh gosh, right. Let's get you situated. Now, unfortunately, I had a Vanda Pomilla, past tense. She is no longer, but Vanda Pomilla was in Ceramis. So this is my Ceramis that I have recycled from Vanda Pomilla, and I'm gonna be quite happy to use it generously for the Sophronitis, I know, Cattleya cernua. All right, let's get you. She grows from all directions. Just want to make sure that I get my label in before I cover any kinds of roots that I can see now, instead of poking and stabbing away at some roots. And then I'll just fill up with whatever ceramics I have left. The roots are used to a very wet environment because of the sphagnum moss. And I shall now fill up with akadama that is mixed with grit. Just want to make sure that whatever is happening on the other side, that I do see what's going on here. Because it has been on a mount and it has grown somewhat down on an angle there, which I will have to correct with light training. So this is Akadama mixed with gravel, grit, 50-50. I can still have the wicking effect of the Akadama, but I also have the drying effect of the grit. Uh, maybe I didn't make enough. Right. As I have this issue with the leaf down there, I'm going to focus my media on the flat part and hope that any future growths will come up as opposed to growing down. So I shall focus, I shall leave this all without media, seeing as that's the back of the plant, but I shall start now to fill up and around into the middle. Just to retain a little bit more humidity in the pot. This is going to, this looks like a wet setup, but it's actually drier than the moss ever was. Sorry about the shadows. Only just realized that now is concentrating. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, so this is only just to leave more moisture in the pot so that it doesn't dry out so quickly on the surface because as the new growths grow, now that it is in a pot, there's a different climate around the base and I don't want them to rot off. So this is just a little bit of a barrier to the dehydration. And then also just a little bit more 
small lava rock back here. Oh, this is, okay, here we go. To cover that one root that was also used to higher water retention. And let's see what happens. I will, I'm nervous. This is making me somewhat nervous, but my circumstances right now are such, I don't want anything to be any more having to be dealt with. Let me go to the other side. Having to be dealt with two times a year. So it was doing really well on a mount. I hope that it also does well in a pot now, despite its funky little growth habit having been on a mount for so long. I'm just going to give it one flush because all the media was dry, even though I sprayed the roots a lot while working with it. I don't want the roots in dry media now. So this is all seaweed water. At 6.3 pH. Fingers crossed, please, that this works. I'm very nervous and I'll show you why. This is my Sophronites coccinia. It had a burst of roots in September, which I found extremely unusual. And I took advantage, it was also mounted like the Cernua. I took advantage and I was like, yay, roots. And I potted her up just like the Cernua there. No change, I did the same thing. And look at her. She is trying to grow. She did bloom, but I did lose the second piece already. I nipped the bloom off after filming it. So she's trying to grow again. I need roots. Yeah, this is not good. That's why I'm worried for my Cernua. So if you would keep your fingers crossed for all of us that the coccinia makes it, grows me some roots, and the cernia doesn't decline, I would really, really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching. I also appreciate that very, very much. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody, and please, please stay safe and take care. Bye.